Hey everybody, happy Monday. Um, it's 4.30 and I'm super excited that you guys are here. I'm back with Alana and we have a special guest with us. Reagan's here behind the scenes, all a nice six feet distance apart. And we've got a special guest with us. 225 Magazine has sent out Colin Ritchie to take some photos of me. Hey Colin. And um, of what we're doing behind the scenes. And I had a great chat with them today about our approach right now during this super weird dumpster fire of a life we're living right now. Everything is just completely bananas. I, I got up this morning and a lot of people were using the reference hit hit a wall. And I definitely hit a wall yesterday. It was, it was a tough day. Um, and then we got news that we're gonna be doing this a lot longer than they had initially intended. So, you know, I just had to remind myself what's available to me, what do I know? I know how to teach people to cook. So Alana had a great idea that we bring part of our 60 minute spice master class to you guys. And this is a really fun exercise that you all can do at home. And I guarantee you, you have spices in your cabinet. Trust me, if all you have is cinnamon, you can do this exercise. So this, ex this class, 60 Minute Spice Master, is all about how do I use spices? And this is one of the most fun things I learned from Milk Street. Remember, Milk Street is, we are a partner location for Milk Street. They're a media company that has cookbooks and a magazine and cooking classes. And their online cooking classes are free through the end of April. So I encourage everyone to, um, seek out Milk Street and take a class. It would be a great thing for enrichment with your family, yeah. with kids, um, uh, but just super fun for anyone. So consider um, taking a look at Milk Street. But this is all about how to blend spices. Yeah. And um, we have a lot of fun in this class. It's been interesting because no matter what combination our um, the folks who are in the class come up with, it's always good. Even ones where we go, oh, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. They're still good. So what we're gonna, what Alana's gonna do today is she's gonna blend a spice blend based on the on the teachings from this class. We're gonna use that spice blend with an additional bit of salt and sugar added to that spice blend. And most spice blends, because we blend spices every day in the shop, yeah. most of them have salt and sugar or some sort of sweetener in them, whether it's honey or brown or, sugar, yeah, brown sugar or something like that. Um, so she is going to blend a, a spice blend based on the four categories of spices, which we've laid out for you. So very quickly, there's three ways to transform a spice. You can grind it. So whole spices that get ground are very different in those two different forms. You can toast them. Yeah. So toasting happens in a dry skillet. Um, and it's what happens a lot of times in Indian cooking. It's the first part of that cooking process. Or you can bloom them, and that's what we're gonna do today. Okay. So blooming happens with ground spices, hit fat. And that's what's gonna happen today. So we don't wanna just blend spices and bloom them. We wanna have something delicious to eat at the end. Right. And what we do is we cook, we fry chickpeas with that spice blend, and then you end up with a crunchy snack that's delicious, high, good high protein snack that's delicious just for snacking can go on a cheese board or we use those chickpeas a lot of times on top of our lentil soup a lot um, yeah. oh it could be a crouton in a salad as well yep. so alana is going to start choosing her spices from the four categories there's warming spices there's fiery spices there's grounding spices and there's menthol or citrus spices yeah. and so we will put this list of what spices are in what category on our website um, but if you think about a spice blend and what its grounding spice would be, if you think about a curry blend, that grounding spice would be turmeric. If you thought, think about a Tex-Mex blend, that grounding spice would be cumin. If you think about Cajun Creole, a grounding spice would be onion or garlic. So that would be kind of like the basis of the spice blend. So let me write for you all. I'm beyond excited to have a whiteboard today. So what you want to do at home is you need your end goal is two teaspoons. So you're going to end with two teaspoons and you have to choose something from each of the categories. Yes. So then you start doing some math. How am I going to get to those two teaspoons? And then to that, you're going to add a half teaspoon salt and a half teaspoon sugar. So Alana's gonna start choosing her spices for her spice blend. And she's gonna use 
teaspoons and half teaspoons and quarter teaspoons to get herself to the two teaspoons. Let me tell you this, I love all my customers, but when we get to this part in this cooking class, it goes off the rails, y'all. Suddenly no one remembers arithmetic. <laughs> Suddenly no one understands what Fractions. to do. Fractions are like gone from our brains. Trust me, you can definitely do this. And I love how Alana approaches it. She has a cool approach to this. Okay. So give me that flour. Cornstarch. Oh, the cornstarch, sorry. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so what's your grounding spice? Mine's gonna be turmeric. Okay. I saw the spices in here and I think the North African category kind of stuck out to me a yeah. little bit. So you'll see turmeric all throughout the Middle East, India, North Africa. Yeah. Turmeric is definitely something that's not just in a curry powder. It's going to be in lots of spice blends. So that's going to be my grounding Okay, is what I chose. And I think I'm going to do a full teaspoon of okay. it. Okay, so because it's her grounding spice, she's doing more of that. So she's got one teaspoon. So let me do my math up here. I've got one doing a teaspoon of turmeric. Okay, how many teaspoons do you have left, Alana? I have one whole oh. teaspoon. Okay, <laughs> and she's got to get three more spices in there. So what's your next choice? So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of paprika. Okay, which paprika? This is going to be our Spanish sweet. Okay, so just a sweet paprika. And that's going to be for our fiery category. So she's doing one half teaspoon of paprika. And even though it's not hot, even though it doesn't have heat, it's still a fiery spice. It's one of the fiery spices. So fiery spices are paprika, of course, your chili powders, yeah. cayenne. Um, those are your fiery spices. That's that. Fiery spices are an easy category. Yeah, it really is. Everyone understands what a fiery spice is. Okay, what's next? So I think I'm going to go in with a full quarter teaspoon of sumac. Okay. So this is from the, so she's now at a quarter teaspoon sumac. Um, sumac is from the um, menthol yep. category. So su sumac has like a tangy pine, almost a, a well, how would you describe it? Uh, it's, it reminds me a little bit of rosemary, but it's just got zing. It's got tang sumac and lemon want to go out on a date together so same sumac kind of reminds me of like if rosemary and lemon okay. had a baby perfect together. perfect yeah um your other menthol spices are obviously going to be your citrus mm -hmm. um a lot of your herbs are in the menthol spice category oregano marjoram thyme yep. what's interesting about the menthol category is something that i thought would have been in the family with cinnamon is menthol and that is cardamom. Yep. That's part of your menthol spices. And that's one of the ones we have up there. Too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you now have how much left? I have a quarter of a teaspoon. A quarter of a left. teaspoon. And what are you going to add? So I decided to go with ginger. Ah, I love that. I think it's going to add a nice little, I guess, a good warming, but also a little bit of like a, a spicy note to it, too. All right. She made two teaspoons, you guys. So ginger is part of the warming spices. Warming spices like cinnamon, allspice, clove, yeah. um, those are your warming spices. So when you have brought spices in from these four categories, you have hit all the notes that your palate's looking for, and that's what makes for a good spice blend. So you probably can do this in your spice cabinet right now. Yeah. If you can't, it's okay. You, I have done cinnamon alone with the salt and sugar and made amazing chickpeas. I used Tony Sachery's and yeah. it was delicious. An all-purpose yeah. Cajun Creole blend with salt and sugar and it's delicious. Okay, so she's got her, her blend ready. She is gonna drop her chickpeas. This is cornstarch, you guys. So what we have is a can of chickpeas and cornstarch. You drain these and you dry them. Dry them really, really well. Um, when we teach this in the shop, we leave them open to the air for hours yep. to get them super dry. And she's going to coat that in the cornstarch. And once she coats that, she'll show the camera. But what you need to do this is you need your two teaspoons of spice blend plus your salt and sugar. You need a can of chickpeas. Cornstarch. Oil. And that's it.
So we use a neutral oil, mainly because we're teaching spice blending here. So we don't want the oil to add anything to the party. So we use avocado oil. Yep. You could use canola. You could use vegetable oil. I mean, you can use olive oil if that's all you have. Just if you're doing this from a place of, let me see if I'm a good spice blender, you don't want anything to bring in other flavors. So she's going to knock off as much of that cornstarch as she possibly can. They go into a sieve. And you want them coated in cornstarch, but you want to knock off the bulk of that. And then it's going in her skillet um, to fry in, in this, uh, just shallow fry in this neutral oil. And you want to get them in the oil, and then you want to leave them alone. And that's another hard thing for folks in this class is we find that when the salmon or the chicken or whatever it is goes in the skillet, they're immediately grabbing the tongs, grabbing the meat fork, and they want to poke and prod and move it and turn it. Leave it alone. Let the Maillard reaction happen. Let what's happening with fat and protein um, and sugars take place so that um, that browning can happen, which is what we want here. So she's got those in the skillet. Reagan, can you see that? Mm -hmm. And she's just going to move them so that there's no more chalky whiteness, white showing. Um, and she's going to get them in an even layer and she's going to crank up her heat a little bit and she's going to leave them alone and let them brown. And then um, once we get them browned, we are going to add in her spice blend. So again, her spice blend were her from her combination that got her to two teaspoons in with a little bit of salt and sugar. Salt and sugar are flavor carriers mm -hmm. um, and they are in almost all spice blends. Yes. Um, there are great salt-free salt -free spice blends out there. We have to work a little harder to get flavors to do their thing right. um, when salt isn't there. Okay, so I noticed that a lot of kids, I saw my nieces at work on their computers. I saw my godchild at work on their computers. I know LSU is back in. Hey, Clay, Madeline, um, Josue, and Katie from the shop um, are all back hard at work, um, you know, learning, distance learning. So I want to just share with you all some things that you might want to do, not so much from a bop, let me bop this over your head and have a curriculum for you, but just something you and your family could maybe spend a little bit of time um, and maybe learn something along the way without it being an overt lesson. So there are two, and this is all on Netflix, you guys. There are two Netflix documentaries. I believe um, they're both, four, maybe five parts, but you know, you've got probably eight days, if you just watch one episode a night, right. um, eight days of great food documentaries that are less about a lesson and more about, let's see what conversations come of this, let's see what I'm inspired to cook after I watch these. So I'm gonna write them down for you guys. So the first is, it's a few years old, it's called Cooked, and they're on Netflix. So Cooked is with Michael Pollan and each, um, each episode covers a different element, really. It's yeah. air, water, fire, I can't remember the others, but this is probably six or seven years old now, still absolutely relevant. By the way, depending on your brand of chickpeas, they will pop and fly and spatter and sputter. Trader Joe's are the worst culprits for yes. flying across the room. It's kind of entertaining, but you never know where they're gonna go. Um, but depending on the brand of chickpeas, all sorts of things happen. Cooked would be a great one to watch one episode a night. Yeah. Just see what conversations come up, see what you're interested in cooking. It's a great way to see why we cook what we do, why we approach food the way we do in different cultures, right. in different countries. Really, he's one of my favorite people. Um, absolutely love that one. The other one is called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Samin Nozrat is um, absolutely adorable and entertaining. Did you watch it? I did, that was one of my okay. favorites. <laughs> so Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, Heat, four episodes, four nights, yeah. super fun to sit and watch and see what kind of conversations come up and what you, I, I know with the salt, I wanted a piece of Parmesan cheese really, yes. really bad. <laughs> so salt, and again, she's so entertaining. So this is within the last probably year and a half that this came out. This for me is the new joy of cooking. 
this is the book that I give as a wedding. I can't write and talk at the same time. So this is the book that I give as a wedding gift now. This is the basic basics for the cook. When you have mastered, when you understand and have mastered, mastered salt, fat, acid, and heat, your cooking takes off. It's yep. those meals that you, afterwards you're like, dang, that was good. It was like perfect. Balance. I guarantee yeah. you, you balanced these four things. And heat is not about pepper. Yeah. Heat is about heat. The heat in that pan or what's happening in a convection oven, what's happening over a flame, mm -hmm what's happening in a pizza oven. Right. Um, that's the heat part of it. I tell you, the place where I learned so much was with acid. And you've seen yep. that in classes when we correct things or give breathe, breathe life into things with acid. We talk a lot in class. We'll make dishes and we'll talk a lot about things being one note. Yep. Things being like rich and delicious, but not a lot of like, mystery or ooh, what was that and that's where acid comes in or and even thinking about salt we always feel like we need more and more salt and then we're like oh let's add a lemon into it right and that kind of corrects that, that too yeah so understanding when to play with those has been fascinating to me anyway i want to offer that to you all as something to do as a family we're all done let's all admit it we're all done with tiger king yes. we've watched <laughs> them all so maybe let's watch something that not that Tiger King isn't useful, I referred to him as a national treasure earlier, um, but maybe watch something that sparks some activity in the co cooking the next day or makes you think about some of those dishes at restaurants that you love and maybe why you love them. Anyway, I just want to offer that to you all. I am a food documentary nerd, and if you love beautiful documentaries, which I also like well-made documentaries, you're in good shape with both of those. They are both absolutely gorgeous well produced and um, so worth watching. So I want to offer that to you all. Her chickpeas are perfect. So what she's gonna do is stir up her spice blend. And when that spice blend hits the fat, that's when the spices are blooming. And you should smell just an amazing transformation at that point. All right. That transformation should be quite different from what that spice smells like dry yeah. versus when it hits that fat. So she's gonna sprinkle that over and it's gonna bubble up a little bit and we're about to smell wonderful things happening in the kitchen. And this is definitely something that's um, high school and middle schoolers, this is 100% available to them. It's a pantry staple, it's easy to do, it comes together quickly, it gets them creative yep. in, with the spices and it makes for a pretty fantastic snack. So we do this in class and we divide up the group into four groups. So we taste four different spice blends. We've never tasted the same spice blend no. and we seem to consistently, the ones that we say, oh, I don't know how that's gonna work, are a lot of times the one that we love the most. Reagan, what does that smell it like? It smells amazing. It <laughs> smells like Deep inhale. Uh, a curry trying to be something else, but all wonderful. Like it smells so, so wonderful. They are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So paprika, turmeric, even cumin will give you some pretty vibrant color with these, which I think is important. But um, these are crispy on the outside. They're still meaty and soft on the inside. And um, again, we just snack on them when we teach this class, but they're a great thing to have um, for a grain bowl, for on top of a salad. I love them on top of soups. They're fantastic with a glass of rosé. Um, and maybe you could cook some and then watch one of these uh, Netflix documentaries now that everyone's done with Tiger King. So um, we got a little bit of flying chickpeas happening here, um, as they do every time yes. we teach this class. Um, but this is a super fun um, learning experience, but also you end up with something delicious. So we are going to, I'm going to grab a couple spoons right next to my coffee pot there. We're going to burn the roof of our mouth now and taste <laughs> these. So here's, can you see those, Reagan? Yeah. Okay. So they're gorgeous. Oh, they're just so perfectly crispy. I can hear those. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Those are perfect. They're so hot. I know your favorite part of the day is when I eat with my mouth full on camera. Mmm. Really, really good. Those are delicious. Oh, I love the sumac. So the sumac is bright and tangy. Um, paprika is wonderful. A little bit of that salt and sugar making everything come together. There you have it. So you just attended part of our 60 Minutes Spice Master class. Yep. When we're back up and running, we want you in that class for real. Thank you guys. Remember, these videos get edited and they live on our website and they live on YouTube. Um, so they're going to be available to you all. And we'll have the recipe up in the next day. Thanks, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.